Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. From the lethal effects of light pollution to the use of gene silencing to prolong life, we have many exciting stories in store for you today. Let us take a look at the headlines first. Focusing on climate change, Science Express Climate Action Special on Tracks. 8th edition of CMS Vatavaran successfully concludes in Delhi. Life-giving light may also be deadly. Ecologists warn about light pollution. Mysteries of aging revealed. Gene silencing to extend life. In our In Focus segment today, we will discuss about neutrinos and the importance of neutrino research. And now news in details. Climate change, a mounting issue that is assuming a frightening proportion day by day. Now, in order to bring more eyeballs to the problem and create awareness regarding the science behind climate change, India's exhibition on wheels, Science Express has undergone a revamp. The train will now run as Climate Action Special. More details in this report. Science Express, India's innovative mobile science exhibition on wheels, has got a new avatar. The 16-coach AC train which has been running as Science Express Biodiversity Special since 2007 has been redesigned as Climate Action Special. The Science Express Climate Action Special was flagged off from Delhi's Safdarjang Railway Station at 12 noon. On 15th October by Environment Minister Sri Prakash Javadekar, Railway Minister Sri Suresh Prabhakar Prabhu and Science and Technology Minister Sri Harshvardhan. The exhibition, which primarily targets students and teachers, aims to create awareness about the effects of climate change and understand the science behind it. देश भर में एक लाख से भी ज्यादा किलोमीटर की ट्रैवलिंग छः छः दिन का बुक ऑफ वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड्स में अनेक कारणों से इसने अपना नाम दर्ज कराया है विद द क्रूशल क्लाइमेट चेंज समिट इन पेरिस अराउंड द कॉर्नर the Science Express Climate Action Special aims to generate a discussion on the impact of climate change and synergize collective action to combat it. While the exhibition is open to all, Science Express is also set up with a special Joy of Science Lab in which school students can participate in small batches of up to 20 by prior registration. For a visit to the exhibition or any queries, one may send an email to scienceexpress at gmail.com or contact the team aboard the train on 094-284-05407. School students can register for participating in the Joy of Science Lab through email to vascsc.jos at gmail.com or by calling 094-284-05407. 05408. The Science Express is an innovative mobile exhibition on train that has been travelling across India successfully for the past eight years. जनता के जलवायु परिवर्तन पर शिक्षा का इतना बड़ा प्रयास दुनिया में कहीं नहीं हुआ है जो भारत कर रहा है और इस बार ये 19,000 किलोमीटर जाएगी, 20 राज्यों में जाएगी. बासर स्टेशंस पर जाएगी और कम से कम बासर क्लार्क छात्र और नागरिक इसको देखेंगे यह हमारी उम्मीद है। The exhibition train has since covered over one lakh kilometers across the country, receiving more than 1.09 crore visitors at its 335 halts in 1,205 exhibition days. Outstanding movies on environment and wildlife. 
expert deliberations on the status of environment and mitigation steps and much more were the attractions of this year's CMS Vatavaran. The 8th edition of CMS Vatavaran, the largest Indian film festival on environment and wildlife, successfully concluded in capital city Delhi recently. So what transpired at the five-day event? Let us see this report. The 8th competitive edition of CMS Vatavaran, India's largest environment and wildlife film festival, was successfully conducted in the capital during 9th to 13th October. Focused on conserving water resources, CMS Vatavaran, this year was based on the theme Water for Life. The five-day event saw the screening of 74 Indian and international films centered on water management, clean water, environment and wildlife. The event was presided over by veteran actor and director Sri Amol Palikar, renowned water conservationist Sri Rajendra Singh and Director General CMS Sri P. N. Vasanthi as chief guest. An eminent jury chaired by Sri Amol Palikar shortlisted the screen films for the awards. My heart goes out to all these filmmakers for making us a little better human beings, making us aware of the problems, making us aware of the anguish and making us aware of our responsibilities that we also, instead of just sitting back and doing nothing or only debating and pointing figure, fingers at others, we all should do something, maybe a tiny little bit in whatever manner. Besides screening of the movies, the event also saw various sessions of seminars, media workshop and Green Hut focusing on the environmental, social and economic aspects of water conservation. 22 films were nominated for the awards under the 8 national and 5 international categories. While the best film award under the Indian category was given to My Name is Salt by Farida Pacha. Best film under the international category was awarded to the film The Last Call by Enrico Serasuolo. The event also saw the declaration of the CMS Vatavaran Young Environmental Journalism Awards. While the Young Environmental Journalism Award in the print category went to Anirudh Ghosal, Principal Correspondent, The Indian Express, and Pritha Chatterjee, Special Correspondent, The Indian Express. The Young Environmental Journalism Award online category was given to Manu Mudgil, Freelance Consultant, India Water Portal. Similarly, documentary filmmaker Himanshu Malhotra was declared the winner 2015 Prithvi Ratan Award for Environment and Wildlife Filmmaking. Noted environmentalist and water conservationist Anupam Mishra was chosen for the Prithvi Bhushan 2015 for his contributions towards water conservation, water management and traditional rainwater harvesting techniques. CMS or the Centre for Media Research is an institution that promotes research in the field of environment and wildlife. It aims to spread awareness on environment and wildlife issues through films and have been conducting this film festival since 2002. Less developmental activities, humans have already polluted the air, water and soil resources. Now ecologists have highlighted the harmful effects of light pollution on the ecosystem. According to a new study, artificial lights in the coastal areas are adversely affecting the marine ecosystems and formation of coral reefs. Light is one of the crucial requirements of life. But in today's world, where the boundaries between days and nights have been erased by artificial lights, light pollution is a major threat. A new study reveals how light pollution in coastal areas is disturbing marine animals and drastically affecting coastal ecosystems. 
The warning has been issued by a team of researchers from the universities of Exeter and Bangor. The researchers were studying the marine life in Menai Strait to monitor how artificial light at night affects the settlement of marine invertebrates into new habitats. Based on the study, scientists have come to a conclusion that artificial light from coastal communities, shipping and offshore infrastructure could be changing the composition of marine invertebrate communities. It is well known that marine organisms like coral larvae use light as a prompt to find optimum habitats to settle, grow and reproduce to form coral reefs. In the presence of artificial night lights, this behavior of many animals seems to be affected adversely, thus disrupting the development of ecological communities in the marine environment. The scientists also found that light pollution in coastal areas both suppressed and encouraged colonization by several species such as sea squirts and keel worms. These organisms started to grow on man-made structures like marinas, dockyards and aquaculture facilities instead of their natural environment where they have crucial roles to play. This unwanted growth, referred to as fouling, has harmful effect on the structures along with ecological impacts. Based on these studies, researchers have called for strict action to monitor light pollution in coastal areas and mitigate the effects. The research has been published in the Royal Society journal Biology Letters. saints to modern researchers, man since ancient times has been eager to understand the mysteries of aging and prolonging life. Now a breakthrough discovery shows how genes affect the process of aging. The research also indicates the switching of aging genes may be the secret to prolonged life. Aging and death are the inevitable realities of life and perhaps the oldest mysteries that have baffled mankind. Researchers across the globe since ancient times have been trying to decipher the secret of controlling aging and extending life. Now, after 10 years of dedicated research on the subject, a team of researchers from the Buck Institute for Research on Aging and the University of Washington, under the leadership of Dr. Brian Kennedy, has identified 238 genes linked to aging. The team has found that switching off these 238 genes extends lifespan. And what is more, fasting and restricting calorie intake may be the key to extended life. Researchers have come up with this discovery based on a study conducted on 4,698 strains of yeast to determine which genes were responsible for aging. The team examined the strains, each with a single gene deletion, and then monitored how long cells lived for before they stopped dividing. Based on the results, researchers identified 238 genes which affect the process of aging and which are conserved in mammals. The genes, when silenced, increased the lifespan of yeast cells. The research also shows that deleting a particular gene called LOS1 extend life of yeast cells by 60%. Previous studies link LOS1 to a master pathway that is involved in calorie restriction through fasting indicating that fasting may extend the lifespan. The study has been published in the journal Cell Metabolism and offers tremendous scope of developing new target-based therapies to extend lifespan. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be back with more science news. Stay with us. Welcome back after the break you are watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment 
साइंस एक्सप्रेस Renowned researcher Dr. Vinod Prakash Sharma, widely known for his pioneering work in vector biology and bioenvironmental control of malaria, passed away. He was 77 years old. Dr. Sharma is well known for his work on chemo and radio sterilization of male mosquitoes and malarial control. The first director of National Institute of Malaria Research, Dr. Sharma retired as additional director general of Indian Council of Medical Research for his outstanding contributions to science. Dr. Sharma was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 2014. He was presently the Meghnath Saha Distinguished Fellow of the National Academy of Sciences at the Center for Rural Development and Technology, IIT Delhi. In an era when we are running short of fossil fuels, cheaper, cleaner, and efficient alternatives are a must. Towards this direction, Rais Markani, a mechanic from Madhya Pradesh, has come up with a cost-effective, eco-friendly car. that runs on water and calcium carbide the car is technically designed to run on acetylene gas which is formed from a chemical reaction between calcium carbide and water mr markani has filed for a patent for his innovation in another step towards cleaner and cheaper energy bara pitha village in odisha has become the state's first village to become fully solar powered The village has started completely using solar energy to ensure uninterrupted power supply. Under this project, every household in the village has been provided two solar home lighting systems, and the street lights and school buildings have also been powered with solar lighting system. The solar project is supported by National Aluminium Company Limited, Echo, and Electronics and Jackson Solar. Space enthusiasts will now get a glimpse of the history of space exploration as NASA has released more than 11,000 photos from its Project Apollo archive. The photos posted on the Project Apollo archive Flickr account for public viewing captures the lunar missions spanning from the first manned test flight in 1968, Apollo 7, to NASA's last lunar mission, Apollo 17, in 1972. The archive contains pictures of Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon, and Buzz Aldrin descending the lunar module along with pictures of the moon's surface and Earth as seen from space. Neutrinos, the tiny particles that won the Nobel Prize in Physics for 2015. Neutral and almost undetectable, neutrinos are everywhere. And according to researchers, understanding neutrinos in depth is vital to understanding how the universe works and its origins. Neutrino research is today a frontier research area offering wide scope. So, what are neutrinos and why are they important? Well, this will be the topic of our discussion in our next segment in Focus. Sixth October two thousand fifteen, the Nobel Prize two thousand fifteen in physics was announced. And while the world applauded, this year's Nobel was bagged by a particle whose existence we barely acknowledge. The Nobel in physics this year was jointly awarded to Takaki Kajita from the University of Tokyo and Arthur B. Macdonald from Queen's University, Canada. for the discovery of neutrino oscillations which shows that neutrinos have mass neutrinos the most abundant particles that permeate this earth yet the least understood for a long time it was believed that atoms are the fundamental particles it was also proved that energy and momentum are conserved during reactions this changed in 1931 It was in this year that Wolfgang Pauli was conducting his studies. Pauli observed that energy and momentum did not appear to be conserved in certain radioactive decays. Based on this observation, he suggested that this missing energy might be carried off undetected by a neutral particle. In 1934, Enrico Fermi developed a comprehensive theory of radioactive decays taking into account Pauli's hypothetical particle naming it the neutrino but it was not until 1959 that Clyde Coven and Fred Rhines 
who were studying the particles created by a nuclear power plant, discovered the actual particle that fitted the expected properties of the neutrino. Neutrino, a world place of neutron. The term in Italian means the little neutral one. Today, it is clear that neutrinos are one of the fundamental particles that make up the universe. These unseen particles permeate the universe to the extent that if one was to hold one's hand towards the sunlight for one second, about a billion neutrinos from the sun will pass through it. While neutrinos are a group of particles called leptons, somewhat similar to the much more familiar electron, there is a one fundamental difference which makes them highly fascinating. Neutrinos, as the name suggests, are neutral and do not carry electric charge, unlike electrons which are negatively charged. Some of the interesting properties of neutrinos include that they are unaffected by the electromagnetic forces that permeate the universe and hence pass through great distances through matter without being affected or absorbed by it. Discoveries made till now suggest the existence of three types of neutrinos. Each of this type, called flavor, is related to a charged particle which gives the corresponding neutrino its name. Hence, while the electron neutrino is associated with the electron, the other two neutrinos are associated with heavier versions of the electron called the muon and the tau. Another unusual aspect of neutrinos is that the three flavors of neutrinos are almost identical and they can change into each other and they propagate with the speed of light. Physicists originally believed that neutrinos were massless but in the 1990s it was proved otherwise. In 1998, Takaki Kajita's team at the Super Kamiokande Neutrino Observatory found that when cosmic rays hit the Earth's atmosphere, the resulting neutrinos switched between two flavors before they reached the detector under Mount Kamioka. In 2001, Canadian physicist Arthur MacDonald, who conducted studies at Sudbury Neutrino Observatory, discovered similar results. The results proved the existence of neutrino oscillation and that neutrinos have mass, which resulted in the Nobel Prize 2015. Now, the question arises why is research on neutrinos so important? Neutrinos are formed during high-energy astrophysical events like exploding stars, gamma ray bursts and nuclear fission. As it happens in the Sun, while on Earth, they are produced from nuclear power stations, particle accelerators, nuclear bombs, general atmospheric phenomena. According to researchers, neutrinos that exist today must have originated about 15 billion years ago, soon after the birth of the universe. Hence, scientists believe that study of neutrinos can convey crucial astronomical information about the origin of the universe, especially about the dark matter. Neutrino research offer much scope of applications, ranging from detecting the conditions at the hot core of the Sun and galactic core of Milky Way, to exploring astrophysical sources beyond the solar system and observing and understanding the formation of supernova. Being extremely tough to detect, studying neutrinos is difficult. Some of the laboratories involved in neutrino research include the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory in Antarctica, the Super Kamiokande Neutrino Observatory in Japan, the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory Canada, the Brookhaven Neutrino Project, etc. In January 2015, Indian government approved the setting up of the India-based Neutrino Observatory in Bodhi West Hills of Tamil Nadu. Neutrinos indeed offer the promise of deeper understanding of the universe. It is expected that neutrino research will be the future physics and the studies will unravel many cosmic mysteries. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. 
You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today, but we'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye.